Hello fantastic folks and welcome to my channel. I confess that I love fireworks. I'm not sure why I find colourful explosions so exciting, but I sure do. Fireworks can be thrilling, beautiful and sometimes a bit scary. So in this video I wanted to explore how this explosive entertainment became so popular. Even if you can't go and see a fireworks display this year, COVID, you can come on this journey with me and find out all about them in my Whiz History of Fireworks. No one knows exactly when fireworks were first invented. Some think that fireworks first originated in China around 2000 years ago. The most popular legend has that fireworks were discovered by accident when a Chinese cook ended up mixing charcoal, sulphur and saltpeter. The mixture burned and when compressed in an enclosed space, it exploded. There are also accounts as early as the 1st century AD that the Chinese had a kind of gunpowder which they put inside bamboo tubes and then threw it into fires. These were used to create small explosions during religious ceremonies, but some of the tubes could have shot out of the fire like little rockets. Certainly in China, the invention of gunpowder sparked an interest that led to further experimentation. However, about 1000 years ago, a monk from the city of Luyang in Hunan province called Li Zhen, forgive me for the uh, pronunciation because I probably didn't say that right, is often revered as the inventor of fireworks. Even to this day, the area is still the largest producer of fireworks anywhere in the world. During the Song Dynasty, a temple was built to worship Li Zhen, and the people of China still celebrate the invention of the firecracker on the 18th of April every year. In China, firecrackers were thought to have the power to ward off evil spirits and demons that were scared by the loud bangs. Chinese New Year is a very popular event that is synonymous with the use of firecrackers, which are said to bring in the New Year free of evil spirits. Most people think that Marco Polo was the first to bring gunpowder to Europe in the 13th century, but many historians favour the theory that the Arabs gained the knowledge of gunpowder from China around the year 1240, and then the Crusaders, who were returning from their wars in the Middle East, brought gunpowder back to Europe. It is also thought that a monk called Roger Bacon, good name, could have been the first person in the UK to use gunpowder. Due to the discovery of various documents which records his experiments, containing one from 1242, where he writes that you will get thunder and lightning if you know the trick. So how did they become so popular? During the Renaissance, Europeans strove to discover new ways to develop pyrotechnics. The Italians focused on creating stunning special effects, while in Germany they focused more on the scientific development. The advancement of fireworks in Europe can definitely be credited to the work done by both of these countries. The English were also captivated by fireworks. In 1487, fireworks were used at the coronation of Elizabeth of York, the bride of Henry VII, where a dragon spat out fire into the Thames. Anne Boleyn also had fireworks at her coronation too, where the firemasters were described as wild men, casting fire and making hideous noises. The popularity of fireworks soared in Great Britain during the sovereignty of Queen Elizabeth I. William Shakespeare mentions fireworks several times in his plays, and fireworks were so much enjoyed by the Queen herself that she created the position of Firemaster of England. And King James II was so pleased with his fireworks display at his coronation that he actually knighted his firemaster. By the mid 17th century, fireworks were used as an entertainment on an extraordinary scale, providing popular entertainment at resorts and public gardens and gatherings all across Europe. In the USA, early settlers brought their love of fireworks with them to the New World, and fireworks became part of the very first Independence Day a tradition that continues to this day every 4th of July. Other celebrations, such as New Year, are also associated with fireworks. 
Although the UK doesn't host a specific fireworks festival, many countries around the world, including Japan, do. So how did we end up incorporating fireworks into the pre-existing celebration of Bonfire Night? We can't talk about the British celebration of Bonfire Night without talking about the gunpowder plot of 1605. This was a failed attempt by a group of English Catholics to kill King James I of England, also known as King James VI of Scotland, and most of the Protestant aristocracy by blowing up the Houses of Parliament during the state opening on the 5th of November 1605. The plot was devised by a guy called Robert Catsby. Other plotters included Thomas and Robert Winter, Christopher Wright, Thomas Percy and several others. The explosives were prepared by the most well-known plotter, Guy Fawkes, who was an explosives expert. And it was Fawkes who was left in charge of executing the plot while the others fled into the country. One plotter, Francis Tresham, supposedly gave the game away by writing an anonymous letter to his brother-in-law, Lord Monteagle. This letter led to a search of the vaults beneath the House of Lords, including the cellar, and at midnight on the 5th of November, Fawkes was caught not far from 36 barrels of gunpowder. The discovery of the gunpowder plot provoked a wave of relief across the nation. The date was celebrated after Londoners were invited to light bonfires as a means of celebrating the failure of the plot. The gunpowder plot was commemorated years after though, and special sermons and other public acts such as ringing of church bells became normal on the 5th of November. It became a Protestant celebration that contributed to religious and national life of 17th century England. By the 1650s, celebrations eventually became more extravagant, with fireworks and mini explosives being let off. The back garden fireworks of the time, squibs, serpents, crackers, often made in unsuitable surroundings of the fireworkers' homes in busy, crowded streets, are described by our good old friend Samuel Pepys in his diary. He would have known of the fireworks familiar to us today, like rockets and fountains. Over the years, fireworks have continued to develop. Relatively not that long ago, in the 1950s and 60s, firework night was still very popular indeed. Fireworks were stocked in shops a couple of weeks before the 5th of November, ready for eager children to buy. There were selection boxes of fireworks, or you could buy rockets and larger fireworks individually. Catherine wheels and Roman candles were particularly popular, as were sparklers and bangers, which were small tubes of gunpowder that, after lighting, were thrown onto the ground to explode, not unlike a mini stick of dynamite. Not unsurprisingly, these were banned from sale in the UK, as are Jumping Jacks, another Bonfire Night favourite, as once lit, Jumping Jacks lived up to their name, jumping about erratically. Very dangerous. Disclaimer, in 2004, supplying fireworks to children under the age of 18 became an illegal offence. These days, Firework Night isn't quite as wild as it used to be, and with a focus on health and safety, as people realise setting off explosions in their gardens might not be the best idea, people have now become a little bit more cautious and a bit more sensible, but they're still able to enjoy our crazy entertainment fad that is fireworks. Eventually the celebration has evolved and become what we know and love today. So there you have it, there's my whizzy guide on the history of fireworks. Could have been a bit more whizzy, I guess, but there was a lot to pack in. I hope that you found this video interesting, and maybe you found out something new. And wherever you are, I hope that even in these difficult times, you can hold on to positivity and enjoy bonfire night, even if it's just you cozying up in front of a fire or sipping on a hot chocolate. Whatever you end up doing this weekend, I hope that you can find some joy. Thank you very much for watching this video. And as ever, lovelies, please like and subscribe. See you next time.